Today's Jank Brew is a card I have never played against in Standard, despite it being a uh, Mythic Rare. That card is Zimone and Dina. Zimone and Dina, a bug card, black, green, blue. 3-4 Legendary Human Dryad. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life and you gain. Zimone and Dina also has an activated ability requiring you to tap it, Sacrifice another creature, draw a card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you control eight or more lands, repeat this process. Now, there are at least two clear ways to build around Zimona, Zimona and Dina, one of which is to draw your second card each turn, and the other one is probably token ramp. There's not a lot of great token ramp options, uh, and, and just comparatively to the other ramp strategies within Standard right now, that approach seemed less worthy than simply just trying to draw your second card uh, each turn. So the theme of this deck is that triggered ability. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life and gain two life. To go along with that, uh, we have Gixian Puppeteer, which serves as multiple like additional copies of Zimone and Dina in that it has the same triggered ability. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, each opponent loses two life and you what we're trying to do here is resolve Zimone and Dina, resolve Gixian Puppeteer, and get those triggers. These are reasonable cards, uh, power and toughness-wise, for their mana costs. Not the greatest, but not the worst. And Gixian Puppeteer has a fun interaction with Zimone and Dina, in that when Gixian Puppeteer dies, turn another target creature with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So what we want to be doing is activating these triggered abilities to draw our second card each turn, having our opponents lose life while we gain it, and then when Gixian Puppeteer dies, we want to have good targets to return to the battlefield, obviously Zimone and Dina. Um, while we're drawing cards, couldn't hurt to have Shielded the Apocalypse. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. This is a card, if you've played Standard at all, you've seen a million times, because it's probably the best card in Standard. Uh, and we're going to need some good cards in this otherwise somewhat janky deck uh, to survive and hopefully win. Um, moving on from the four slot, we've got some other ways to draw cards. Uh, and these are good magic cards to be playing if you've played standard. You've probably played against Glissa Sunslayer. Glissa Sunslayer is a first strike death touch uh, creature for three, Phyrexian Zombie Elf. When she deals damage to a player... You get to choose one. Draw a card and lose a life, which is obviously what we want to be doing a lot of in this deck. Destroy target enchantment. Great option to have. Remove up to three counters from target permanent. Another great option to have. Glista Sun Slayer, just a great magic card. And again, we're going to need some great magic cards that play synergistically with Zimone and Dina and Ixie and Puppeteer to have a shot in the current standard point. Another way we can draw cards off a great magic card is Kaito Shizuki. Planeswalker for three, one, blue, and black with these abilities. At the beginning of your end step, if Kaito Shizuki enter the battlefield this turn, he phases out. Great option because sometimes you can play Kaito Shizuki, uh, phase it out such that it can't be removed, and then be able to automatically, uh, unless they have instant speed removal for Kaito Shizuki the next turn, uh, draw a card off of either Zimone and Dina, uh, or draw a card to trigger Zimone and Dina, or uh, Gixi and Puppeteer. Can also create a... 1-1 uh, one, one blue ninja creature token for its minus 2, but this creature can't be blocked. Uh, pairs well, of course, with its plus 1 to draw a card, then discard a card unless you attack this turn. Just a nice synergistic card to play uh, with our draw cards on your turn strategy. Aether Channeler, I watched a video when this card first came out, um, published by Jim Davis, who's a great magic player, and said, this card is a trap. Uh, it seems good, but it's not, and he gave a whole bunch of reasons why. And um, because I brew jank, I tried a bunch of ways since then to make it good. Back then, the Kiki Jiki uh, card had not yet been banned, so I was trying to make copies of Aether Channeler, um, getting additional triggers off of its tokens, and even then, it still was questionably good. So... It's arguable that this is a, the among the jankiest uh, cards in the deck, but I want to try it anyway. It's synergistic. It gives us options. We can 
bounce one of their creatures to push through some damage. We can draw a card to trigger the abilities we're trying to trigger. Um, and it pairs reasonably well with Dixie and Puppeteer if we don't have a Glissa or a Zimone in, in uh, play or in the graveyard, and or we already have a Glissa or a Zimone in play, and those are our only other targets. I wanted another three drop that plays with our strategy. here. So that rounds out our three drops. We'll move on to two, which is where the, the magic happens. And I'm going to start with the best of them. Um, Malcolm, Alluring Scoundrel, is the best to drop in this deck for a handful of reasons. Um, one, it has flash. Two, it has flying, so it's likely to be able to push through some damage. But especially um, when it deals combat damage, you get to draw then discard. So it's triggering the effect that we want to trigger, filtering our deck for cards that we want to have. Um, if it wasn't legendary, it would obviously be a four of inclusion. But the great thing is, is that you can play it on turn two at the end of your opponent's turn, then slam as a Zimone and Dina, and immediately trigger the effect. Um, that's enough about that. Fairy Mastermind is also good, and, and when I first built this deck, I wanted to find ways to trigger the draw your second card ability on our opponent's turn. Uh, I determined it was too hard to reliably do that without janking up the deck too hard. And so this is the only card that, that stayed in the build after a little bit of testing and thinking that has the ability to do that. So this is the only way, as of right now, that we can draw a second card on our opponent's turn and trigger the ability. Uh, and having more and more of these in play is not necessarily better because you've got to pay a lot of man mana for them. So right now there's only two. Um, but it is a good card and maybe should be considered for more than that. Uh, when we get to some sideboard options, there's not actually sideboard, I'm playing this in best of one, but uh, we're going to talk about some sideboard options that you may want to consider uh, putting into your deck if you want to bar this idea and try to trigger your uh, drawing second cards on your opponent's turn. Uh, we'll move on to Rona, Herald of Invasion. This is a mana sink for us later in the game. It can also draw a card and then discard a card, um, which is what we want to be doing again in a perfect world. All of our troop two drops would give us that opportunity to draw and discard, or at least draw on turn three when we play Zimone. So Her uh, Rona Herald does that for us. Uh, we also have Suspicious Stowaway, another card that's probably a trap and arguably the worst card in the deck, uh, along here with uh, Aether Channeler and very questionable. Uh, sometimes this card's good, but most of the time it's not. Um, this is Jank Brews, we're trying some fun stuff. So it, it meets our criteria of being able to draw on turn three, uh, but it's so easy to remove uh, and it doesn't help keep us alive very much unless it becomes nighttime. If it becomes nighttime, this card's great, but this is the only means by which for it to become nighttime in our deck. So arguably something worth cutting, uh, just don't have too many other options that aren't additional copies of legendary cards and we want to give it a roll. Um, so beyond that, we've got Pretty typical removal suite. We've got a couple copies of Bitter Triumph. We've got a couple copies of Go for the Throat. We've got a couple copies of Cut Down. We need to just not die in the early stages of the game. If we can get our triggering action going on against card or decks like Mono Red or Mono White, we usually survive them. But often with these otherwise weak two drops that we can't trade off because we need them for their abilities, we need to have a reasonable removal suite. So beyond that, we've got four. Uh, Silver Bullet, uh, sort of janky cards here um, that I just want to be testing out in a deck like this. You got a copy of Spell Pierce. Um, we have a copy of Make Disappear. We have a copy of Terra Sunder, uh, which, which I think is, or the inclusion, perhaps maybe even should be a second copy. It's just a versatile card against uh, a lot of action that we see in standard early and late game. So it can remove the uh, the K card, the, the one mana uh, uh, saga that Red plays. On um, turn two, which is, which is nice, it can remove the any any sort of enchantment or removal effects like domain plays or like uh, like the enchant the, the green white enchantment deck plays. And then we have um, March of Wretched Sorrow, a hedge against dying to red early. We do have a lot of cards with black mana in there, um, mana costs. So if we need to pitch early to stay alive, we can do that. So real quick, this is a long deck tech, but we're going to review the sideboard. These are, again, not sideboard cards, just alternate uh, considerations for versions of this deck that stick with the not-token ramp theme, but with the drawing multiple cards theme. The Tainted Indulgence, I had like three copies in the original deck, decided to cut it entirely. Um, but it allows you to, at a low mana cost, draw two cards on your opponent's turn. Again, tri triggering Gixian Puppeteer or Zimone and Dina. 
Quick Study does the same thing. Uh, Lord Skitter, if you wanted to pursue the more token style strategy where you use Zamone's ability to sacrifice tokens, creates like infinite tokens, which is great. And it's great against like um, reanimate decks and stuff. Uh, pretty sure the Schism, good card overall, uh, can potentially draw cards and create tokens. So that was interesting. Jace, Perfected Mind, I considered one of these as a, you know, fun of in this version. And maybe it'll go back in, um, but I haven't tried it yet. Again, it lets you draw cards, but keeps you alive too. And I think uh, in the token version in Rika, Domnathi might even be a reasonable alternative to Shieldred, even though Shieldred's great. There were early versions of Green Black, Wind Shieldred, and Enrika were both in standard. And there were some decks putting up great performances in tournaments with Enrika in, in lieu of Shieldred, which is surprising. Uh, of course, the last uh, janky card to throw in here is the Goose Mother. Uh, this card. It's the bill in that it draws cards uh, and has some evasion. Um, it creates some tokens. You can't sacrifice those tokens to uh, uh, Zimone, unfortunately. But probably the worst card to consider among them. But it, it is a nice mana sink. And one thing to note is that if you go the, uh, the route of tokens and ramp, you need payoffs that also play with your strategy. So Goose Mother might be worthy of considering as maybe one or two of if you were to rebuild this deck with the token sack ramp theme. Uh, we've, we've gone overboard, so we're going to call it there and get into some action. This is the third day that we've played um, in the new season. Made a little bit of progress. Um, I think we're Platinum 3 or something like that. Uh, uh, this hand is certainly questionable. One thing I didn't mention in... I'm going to mold this. A uh, tiny bit better. I think the we either want to cut go for the throat or suspicious stowaway. I guess there's maybe an argument for children, given that if suspicious stowaway resolves and doesn't die, allow us to filter into things. But the mana for this deck isn't great. For a relatively low to the ground deck, mana is a little hard. I'm going to cut children. Arguably should have played ship Shipwreck Marsh there. We have more uses for black and blue earlier than... Uh, like, like I needed to go for the throat here. <laughs> I'm mean, almost certainly playing Suspicious Stowaway, but... Turn one, play mistake. Should have Shipwreck, Mar shipwreck Marsh first. This is this is maybe a reasonable argument for go for the throat. We're not going to do it. We're going we're gonna to get our shit on line here, but... Generous Visitor is about as reasonable a target for a uh, turn two go for the throat as you can find, so. Thunder's pretty good here. Hmm. Now I definitely wish I had not played Dream Root Cascade on turn one. All the regrets here, because I'd way rather be dumping that than either Shipwreck Marsh or Death Cop Clay. And there's there's that actually worthy consideration here. Um, do we hold up a Spell Pierce and say go for the throat uh, Naturalist? Um, our opponent is likely to be on uh, Iganjo, which can bring back the Naturalist, but sometimes we want to have Terra Sunder for the uh, trampoly dude that comes back from the graveyard. I can't remember the name of these cards. But I, th ugh, I just really hate leaving Jugai Naturalist in play. 
Um, so I think I think I'm gonna dump spell pierce, keep the lands, um, and I think we're just gonna go ahead and run out Glissa Sun Slayer. Uh, if they happen to play, I mean, I hate leaving this in play here, but if they happen to exile Glissa Sun Slayer, um, having Terra Sunder to blow up the ossification. In, at instant speed, and then remove whatever attacking feature they have because Glissa Sun Slayer has uh, first strike life or death touch is a pretty sick play. So, really, the argument for not playing Glissa there and, and keeping Spell Pierce was that we would get to uh, flip Suspicious Stowaway. Card becomes a lot better at nighttime, but because we'd be leaving the Naturalist in play. Uh, the chances of them casting two spells is really high this early in the game. So we would go back to the daytime anyway. I think this is the better play. So they're probably going to cast three spells. But if they don't have ossification, Glissa Sunslayer is just like an infinite block here. Like They can't push anything through with Glissa in play. So there's the ossification. We're going to take some damage here, and it's going to be painful. Uh, but likely we get a blowout with Terra Sunder um, ripping that ossification here in the near future. So we also have Gixian Puppeteer. Ugh. But I think this turn we probably just have to do, if we can't get too greedy, we'd go to 14, they'd go to 20. I think, I think we're just going to stick with the plan. And I don't think draw a discard does me a whole... Like, I'd rather just have all these cards in hand and make it nighttime and... I don't know. Maybe I'm blocking with it. Who knows? Like contemplating ossification? Interesting. Keep hovering over seafaring werewolf. Calyx. Yeah. I wish I could just eat Calyx off of this, uh, but we're, we're not going to be able to do that because we've committed to... And what I don't want to see here is... Trample, one mana green. They're going to bash. We're doing the thing. Blow up this ossification. If they don't have some sort of protection here, it's going to work out reasonably well. I think we can afford to go six. Plus there's a chance they have something here that I want to respond to with Go for the Throat, so... Fortunately, at first strike, we could also blow up something after that. Uh, Calyx is really annoying, so probably just going to take the damage. If they don't do anything else, we're going to go for the Throat Calyx at the end of turn. Um... Definitely rolling here. I think we're going to keep Glissa back. As much as I'd like to draw, but... Too close to dying. We don't get any additional trigger off of Gixie and Puppet here. It only counts the second one, so... We don't have any creatures to bring back if Gixie and Puppet here dies. They can ossify, oh man, ossification on Glissa again is pretty rough. And I don't think Aether Channeler can get it. Non land permanent, okay, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately this can't happen at instant speed. 
Maybe they get Kixie and Puppeteer. That would be a terrible decision. But it would be good for us. We're hovering over to that Gixie and Puppeteer. I mean, it would be a terrible decision here. Ugh. I love it. Thank you to our opponent. Uh, because they could have forced the block. There's no value to the game. I mean, I, I don't even kind of understand this. Um, we can bounce this guy, which is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, so we're going to block here. And, okay, we get another Galissa. Um, we could bounce this option with Aether Channeler. Or I could get Gixie and Puppeteer. Get back in his hand. and then remove all these counters if we wanted to. Assuming he's probably not going to block. Bit of a tempo game here. Oof, not really sure. Let's bash. We get greedy. And it's do here. All right, so we're going to remove three counters. Back to being a 1-1. One, one. Draw and discard. Malcolm. Malcolm is at least interesting in that we can flash it in. Um, and Glissa Sunslayer. Gosh, I mean, I, I could have just blown up the ossification, which maybe I should have done. I don't know. Uh yeah, definitely should have done, because then this would have triggered the second draw. Okay. Play, play mistake here. I'm new to this deck. Um, we're going to hope they don't have a way to, to deal with Sunslayer. Um, and I think we're going to bounce the Naturalist, because there's not a lot of action they can do about that. It's like likely to be a slow play. And then we have Malcolm to flash in if we really need. So we're going to return this to their hand. We've played kind of poorly, but I don't think we've played as poorly as our opponent has played. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think we're a flash and and just trade uh to two for one ourselves really um make a case for just chumping off but i okay so we may just bash with Glissa and either eat the Calyx um, or get back Gixie and Puppeteer. But if we bash with both, we would get the trigger. It's just the problem is if they just re-ossify uh, Gixie and Puppeteer once we get it back, we're dead. <laughs> uh, I mean, not necessarily dead, but we'd be close to being dead because Calyx. Um, and then Calyx would like get copies of the Asif game. It would just be really ugly. So I, I think I've got to keep a chump blocker back. Yeah, we just eat the Calyx. I'm totally stoked about that. Get the Gixie and Puppeteer back. Also stoked about that. At least now if Gixie and Puppeteer dies, if it gets anything other than ossified, um, then we've got some cool things to bring back. We could bring back a, a Glissa to block even if we lose ours we could bring back a our, our janky aether channeler and bounce something uh so we're going to destroy ossification 
Actually, partially, part of me wants to just destroy Calyx. Um, it just leaves him with an empty board. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hold on to this Yavimaya Coast. In case they play two spells and I want to draw a discard. I don't really need a Yavimaya Coast here. Tilda. Do not need another Glissa, but I'm happy with this. I think I'm just, I'm, again, I'm going to do the exact same. Either they block with Katilda, and it gets eaten. Or they don't, and it gets eaten. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Well, uh, I did, was not. Okay, it's not, it's not in the enchantment until it comes back. Man, I should really pay attention to these cards here. Oh, we're going to get to draw our second card. Trigger Gixie and Puppeteer. Fairy Mastermind's a nice little chump blocker. Uh, and and can actually... Oh, yeah, it can trigger on their, their turn. So, actually, I think I'm going to put a stop here. I'd probably just win here. Because... Yeah, we can flash this in. And then when they draw their card for turn... Uh, it would trigger Gixie and Puppeteer, and they would die. We're going to now draw our second card. And they die. Yeah, we'll take it. That was a little slower than it needed to be. Uh, I think our opponent really misplayed. But that's what happens sometimes in Platinum 3. <laughs> happens sometimes in Mythic, actually, so... 1-0 with arguably the jankiest brew of this season. Happy to be there. Not read our opponent's name. We're going to call him Quint. No green mana. Um, interesting opening hand. We're going to keep this. Dark Slick Shores, Dark Slick Shores. Run out, uh, Rona. So there's there's no way for us to trigger next turn, unfortunately, because we cannot both draw uh, Zimone and a green mana source. Okay, this is bad for us. Uh, this deck is just, if it does what it wants to do, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, we can't we can't bash, we can't really do much of anything here. Um, So I, I question whether we want Besage. There, there is the saga they play. Fortunately, like I can't even, I can't even use Besage unless I draw a green source. Um, we're gonna go here for now. Like I want to keep Ottawara because maybe it bounces something annoying back to their hand, like an Atraxa or whatever. This is potentially an argument for the token version with Lord Skitter, because Lord Skitter would just be exiling a Traxa or Graveyard this turn. Let's draw a discard. They're gonna draw two cards and discard two cards. I haven't seen Tempest Heart in this version. Seems fine. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if they get to play any of these things, we're just so dead. Uh, I don't even know what to discard here because I'd like to keep. I just feel like Bitter Triumph is too, too little, too late. Like if they just if they play one with a multiverse next turn, we're straight up dead. Bitter Bitter Triumph doesn't do a lot of good. Uh, I don't know. Okay, that card is just way too slow. Um, I think the play is Shieldred here. Gain Drain. Maybe not.
We're gonna run this out. We don't really care about gaining life all that much. Both of them push through. This has the potential to trigger multiple times, although it's unlikely from where we are. I don't know, like... We would need to activate Rona now. We're gonna do it. Most mana efficient play other than children. Not really sure which is correct. Draw this card. We can actually flip Rona pretty soon if we want to. Um, there's another bitter triumph, but this card is just worse. Yeah. Otherworldly Gaze is exactly what they want to be doing. That at least gets them to, let's see. Yeah, all of those are permanents. Five, six, seven, eight. So they could definitely attract size this turn. If they dump all three cards and all three of those cards are permanents. Does make me want to get to get Glissa out soon because I don't know. I mean, if, if if they won with a multiverse, uh, they didn't dump them all, and they, they so one of them is not. They can still get a track set here. Didn't. And. Being able to put one of these permanents back in their hand at instant speed could be cool. I might do the same thing I did. Jeez. Just not making enough progress fast enough against this deck. Alternatively, I could Galissa and Malcolm, but if they're able to just freaking get uh, one with a multiverse out, then they portal, they wipe our board entirely. So having three permanents or having three creatures out there doesn't help me a bunch. I mean, if they can do that, we're just straight up dead anyway. Maybe we have to get risky about it and hope they can't get there. I mean, they can otherworldly gaze here. So the, the only way we are in okay shape is if we... All right, we're going to go here. We're running out of time. <laughs> we're going to dump Malcolm. There we go. It, it, the only way we survive is if they just don't have the reanimate spell. Cruelty of gifts. Creature. Right, like creatures, Atraxa probably. We can beat Atraxa. As long as, as long as Atraxa doesn't help them find the reanimate spell, which it looks like it did. Yeah, squirming emergence. Hmm. Well. I think we bitter triumph. Atraxa. Don't care about our life total. Uh, draw our ooh, we draw our second card. Man, just they they can just squirming emergence into the multiverse. Okay, so they can't win with the multiverse into portal, but they could just cast portal. Yeah. There's all these are permanents except for Otherworld. One, two, three. Oh, okay, they can't right now, but they'd be able to off of that. Never mind. Um,
And I guess I can... I don't know. I'm gonna try to Ottawara, whatever they do, and hopefully they just do something dumb. <clears throat> it worked last game. If that happens to be the only squirming emergence they have, and they can't let's see what's this thing do, uh, <clears throat> can't get rid of that right now without Glissa. But if I just play Glissa or Shieldred there, their path to was just so obvious. This lets them play something from the hand that, that makes me assume they have something good there. Okay. Cruelty of Gix. Okay, so their creature probably attracts it again. Get some more stuff. Uh -huh. Um, I gotta hope they whiff on getting anything useful for one with a multiverse. Because... Okay. Uh, they did kind of whiff. Nothing here is especially great. I mean, they can duress me. <laughs> um, in this case, I definitely should have played something last turn. Because we don't have enough action to win yet. All out there for you to see. We Yeah, it's actually kind of annoying because I wanted to make that a. Uh, probably wanted to flip that guy. So. There's just no way that we can. I guess we, we could get lucky and top deck some. Deal with one first. Put a Traxa back in the. I and mean, we have to put a Traxa back in here. Literally can't do anything. It didn't get lucky. Not gonna be able to trigger. Uh, we just go all in here. <laughs> Don't portal me, bro. We get portaled, we will resign. Concede. I'm going first. I'm a little sad about that because the card on top of my deck was Go for the Throat, which deals with any creature they might play. Traxa. Although they just got Squirming Emergence, so we're dead. Now they can portal us, and I don't think there's anything to do about that. Okay, unless our opponent's bad. Quint. They do have a lot of options. Maybe it's not abundantly clear which is the best one.
Virtuing away up to here. Kind of fine with that. Uh, really fine with that. Um, now there's still a, still a chance for them to make the wrong move. Um, As long as they don't squirming emergence. Well. So many options that they have now. Okay, so there's squirming emergence, there's portal. We'll, we'll draw a card, but we're conceding here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Make disappear. It's not good enough. We probably had a shot there by getting more aggressive faster. Just hoping that they wouldn't be able to portal us. Lesson learned. <clears throat> one in one. A Zimone draw. One. Sietia. Sieta? All right, so our mana is okay here. Not the best opening hand, but not the worst. See from Hmm. Um, yeah, so we're going to flash in a Fairy Mastermind. Hold up Spell Pierce. <laughs> Moving it. Old Partition. Okay. We go here. We play Rona. Got cut down and spell pierce up. Maybe we can spell pierce a. Okay, a Jace. Happy. All day. I was thinking Wandering Emperor, but. We'll take it. <laughs> uh, sure. Two and one. Sometimes a uh, spell pierce rage quit. Standard rank is a thing. Definitely not the way to rank up quickly. You're playing a slow deck and you rage quit to spell pierce. The way our hand looked, if they had anything, this game was going to last a while, and they had a really fair chance. Ick, 90. Where they made that, that dinosaur? Um, this is not the greatest hand, but we've got removal for early things. We'll try it. This is Jank Bruise, after all. Monastery Swiss Spear. Hmm. Mm hmm. Well, we're gonna let ourselves get Swift Speared. Could have played Land War Waste, but that would mean the next two lands come into play tapped, which means all we would have access to is cut down. They regret it if they cast Monstrous Rage here. Yeah, well. Go. I'm regretting. Maybe they wouldn't have cast that if we had Land or Waste up, but. Hmm. Um, now I think we just cut down while we have the opportunity. Like, all the regret. Because they could just play Hasty Goblin Dude. Not be fond of. 
but we're gonna do it. Speaking of hasty goblin dude. Now I just gotta hope that they don't have lightning strike. Because our play is a uh, have lightning strike. Then I just hope they don't have any way to deal with shoulder the following turn, otherwise we are just straight up dead. <laughs> so we've called their entire hand so far. <laughs> I still have something. Seven. Okay. Uh, is there a reason to consider something else? You can tear asunder, Squee. You can flash Malcolm and Fairy Mastermind. If we chumped with Fairy Mastermind, we would take. I don't know, there's just too many ways for us to die there. We're, we're gonna... We're gonna go here. Hopefully they can't remove shield. If their last card is attack, uh, burn your dude for five, we'll be sad. Arguably, we'll be sad if it's any means by which to remove shield rid. Okay, Felden is not the worst, but we're going to be at one, I think. Or are we just dead? Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we're just dead. Uh, we can only block here. Yeah. Sad day. Sometimes it just happens against Mono Red. I, I obviously wish I had played Land War Wastes on turn one. We might not be dead. One and two now. This mana is awkward. But we've got two Malcolms. We're gonna keep this. <laughs> Black is the most common color among our land base. I think we have 18 sources. Um hope not to have to do that, especially against seeing Restless Cottage on turn one. Mosswood Dread Knight. Uh, they're okay, they're drawing a card and losing life. Mosswood Dread Knight was in the original version of this deck. Uh, and it just didn't pan out well at all. Great right in this deck, though. Okay. Um, so we're going to dump the other Malcolm. Come back off Gixi and Puppeteer. We're going to play Takanuma. We're going to roll out Rona. Does give us two potential ways to draw a discard next turn. We're really hoping to just hit a land off the top because we want to play Gixian uh, up a tier before we draw these second cards. Because it doesn't count on the third card, it doesn't count on the fourth card, it only counts on the second card. Didn't get there. Unfortunately. Oh, I said, well, it wouldn't have made a difference, because, again, only counts on the second one. I was thinking maybe I should have drawn it to look for Simone. Um, okay, we're going to continue dumping Malcolms. And we are going to go ahead and draw this card here, just because we really want to hit a land. Um, but in this case, I think because I have so many... Hmm, I, I kind of like Terra Sunder, because it can remove Mosswood Dread Knight... Um, March of the Wretched Sorrow is worthy of consideration, but I think we're going to dump a Gixian Puppeteer. I'm really not sure. 
I don't know how bad, how much I care about them reusing those. Maybe Terra Sunder is the cut. Yeah, there's just so many potentially good. It just hits everything. We're gonna go here, and we're gonna play Shieldred. Actually, do we have anything to bring back? Okay, we don't. Um, yeah, we're gonna play Shieldred. Do they have the removal for Shieldred? Probably yes. For Triumph. Um, sure, we're gonna draw here because we wouldn't be chump blocking anyway. Uh, Fairy Mastermind is the dump. Better Triumph losing some life. Okay. Okay, uh, we're gonna go here and do the damn thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna dump this and drain. Back lizards. Nope. Like this, hits all day. Um, I think the play is exile this dude. Just a lifelink is really damn annoying. So we're just gonna exile that dude. Well, we're gonna do thing. Uh, you're gonna cut, don't cut down. Um, they're just going to attack here. And all these maps is kind of annoying. Shieldred. Um, glad we have Bitter Triumph now. There's land. Which allows them to do it again. Pretty cool. I like Sentinel of the Nameless City. And Virtue of Persistence is annoying, for sure, because it removed, like, both of our gear. Um... I don't know about if I care about me losing life. I mean, I gotta remove this anyway, because I don't want them gaining life, so... Oh, I'm annoying. It's not a very mana-efficient play. But... We'll do it anyway. We'll pay three life. We'll draw. Hmm. Not the most cool, but uh, now we do the thing. Oof. Okay, so I guess I'm dumping Kaito. Let's see. Do I have... Okay, this is kind of interesting. I don't have anything great down here. Uh, I think I'm going to dump Aether Channeler, so if they remove the Gixian Puppeteer, <laughs> I get Aether Channeler. It would be the best target, I think. They don't have a way of exiling. Yeah, Virtue is annoying because it gains them some life. But bringing back Aether Chandler is pretty funny. <laughs> We're straight up bouncing that dude. Creature. The Restless Cottage. So they're getting there. They actually, they have the mana for Virtue of Persistence. Well, how much I care about that. But we're going to keep trying to get them dead. Play Gixian Puppeteer. Uh, do the damn thing. Mm, I think I'm dumping Death Capgalade. Can't do anything else this turn, so I'd rather play Restless Reef. Uh, 
No attacks. Virtual Persistence feels kind of fine. But I feel like it might be a little too slow for them. I can't imagine you would want that. You already have one. I guess you could argue that you're, you're going to bring back a shield red and you want to do a bunch of drawing. Um, okay. So it's kind of interesting. Figure to four. And then, ooh, can't trigger to four, and flip Rona. If I flip Rona, I think they die anyway, though. Uh, yeah, I think they just die. Attacks, okay. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah, we'll take it. They were dead on board. It really makes me wonder why they played Virtue. Maybe they were slow to realize it like I was. Back to two and two. With a shieldred. I think that's shieldred. Um, okay. This is one of those hands where suspicious stowaway looks bad. <laughs> we're gonna, at least we're on the play. When it runs out. Haunted Ridge. Well, here comes Suspicious Stowaway. They happen to play nothing. Not so bad. Uh, but they did not play nothing. I don't really want to bounce that dude. I don't really want to draw cards off him. And I don't really want to not play him either. Uh, so we're going to start by drawing and discarding. Go for the throat. Hmm. I like having some removal. I don't know really what our opponent's up to yet. Maybe I'm dumping Ottawara. I hate to do that without knowing what they're up to, but um, I feel like Restless Reef may be better later in the game. Gosh, I'm really not sure. I feel like I want to keep my removal. Hmm. Maybe I'm dumping a Restless Reef just because this turn we want to play Aether Channeler. I think. I got a suspicious stowaway flip. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe Aether Channeler is better next turn. Well, we're probably playing Shield Red next turn. We're gonna dump Restless Reef. Totally could be wrong. And we're gonna play Aether Channeler. And I think we're just gonna draw a card. <clears throat> Trades with Blood Dive Harvester, and I'd be happy to have this in my yard. Another Blood Dive Harvester. Maybe it eats a cut down? Super one? Hmm. Fine with that. Okay, so we've got a cut down for Blood Dive Harvester. So we could play Rona. We could just roll out Shieldred. We could get Rona plus hold something up, but. We're just going to play Shieldred and do nothing.
very probably have removal for that. If they don't, they're going to be dumped into blood tokens. If they have, if they have cut down, they can actually blood tie the harvester to make Shieldred a, a one. Oh, now they can actually just straight up kill Shieldred. Whew. Saucy. Got a tiny bit of value off of that. Um, so I think I think the play here is cut down the blood eye, the harvester, bash, play Rona. The next turn we can use Rona's ability. Because we don't want this stupid thing killing our Gixie and Puppeteer. Look at this Aether Channeler getting in some damage. That's what I'm talking about. Aether, Aether Channeler has overperformed so far, not gonna lie. Sorry, Jim Davis. I do think Jim Davis is generally correct in this assumption, but so far, in the jankiest of jank, this is a Moan bug draw decks. Aether Channeler has been decent. Mountain, mountain. I like their lands. I approve Venergand. I'm gonna all the lands. And I, I wish we had that shield in play. We would have just Pumped. Oh, okay. There's some sauce going on here. Definitely some sauce. Mm, mm hmm. I think I'll play Shieldred again. <laughs> Make him sack, hit the Rona. I think. Yeah, because I don't want him hitting Gixxing Puppeteer. I don't think. Because I don't have anything good in my yard to bring back. So, we're going to go here. Uh, I I don't really want to draw this card here. I, I think I'm just going to chill and see what happens. They have some direct damage for Shieldred where they can also hold on a Thrill Seeker. Mechanized Warfare. I don't know what's going on over here. I kind of like it. But Vanner Gand. This it's maybe even qualifies as a jank brew. Free Blood Tie the Harvester, Voltaren Thrill Seeker, Mechanized Warfare. I'm inclined to block this. Or because, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to block. <laughs> Let's see what you got here. I have a feeling then that we're going to just sacrifice anyway. Um, okay, so end festivities would get shield rid. Uh, a little annoying. It's going to get uh, Aether Channel or two, but we'll we'll draw on this card here because they don't have a lot of action. Fairy Mastermind might be better than one of these. I'm not too worried about my life total right now, so I think I'm going to dump Go for the Throat and just give us like more and better options. Now we at least have something cool in the yard if Gixxian Puppeteer dies. Ooh, now we got Simone and Dina too. Uh, but the play here is just Gixxian Puppeteer. Do the damn thing. Now we probably dump Fairy, Fairy Mastermind. Um, actually, Spell Pierce can't of why we would want spell pierce here watch him play something sick where i want spell pierce and okay, honey colt anvil heart red source or artifact okay um yeah. okay but <laughs> besage is not bad off the top but we don't we don't have the means by which to both zimon and dina and besage you uh um Let's just get started with Zimone and Dina. Resolve. Do the damn thing. Alyssa. Okay, now we're dumping Fairy Mastermind. Got them both. Gixie and Puppeteer and Zimone and Dina. Bam, bam. Uh, yeah, so now we're gonna bash with the Puppeteer. I feel like without some wild board wipe, it's going to be hard for them to come back here. And honestly, even with a board wipe, it's going to be hard for them to come back here. Because... 
If they kill Puppeteer, uh, I'm gonna run this out, despite potentially wanting it. But if they kill, if they kill Gixie and Puppeteer, we have three points of damage. Well, hmm. ooh, a little saucy. We're gonna need those as blockers, but oh, getting there. Three, two, three, and two. I'm having fun with this deck, so normally I'd pause this, uh... Rona's Vortex was also a one-up in this deck at first. Um, so we're going to try to go to seven. Three and two here. Voodoo Demon. I think that's Hawatli. Um, really weird hand, but we've got lands and spells. We've got all the colors of the rainbow, of our rainbow. Um, so we're gonna try it. We could be on... You know, I might, I might regret, this is the second time where I played the, uh, an untapped land on turn one where I had cut down. And then these guys are definitely on dinosaurs. Maybe I wish I was cut, cutting down right here. Uh, but I think I'm just going to hold up Bitter Triumph in case they play, like, I don't know. But the thing that would be the most annoying is if they play that 4-drop that's like a 5-3 uh, that has Ward. Which makes me kind of want to just kill this Exali's Lorekeeper. Anything else? I think I'm alright with it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna kill this Exiles. Maybe I should have done that uh, there. Um, in fact, if you're watching this and want to learn from my mistakes, def definitely should have done that on their upkeep. Because if they had uh, protection for it, I'd rather than do it on their turn, such that they would not be able to cast this pugnash pugnacious Amber Skull. So part of me wants to just bounce that dude. Um, but I think I'm, I think I'm going to remove it, because next turn I want to play a Puppeteer and then maybe start drawing. Um, if they don't play another Dinosaur, I might not remove it. Okay, they don't like the pace at which I'm thinking about it, so we're, we're going to go to 4 and 2. These people are certainly not making a lot of progress in there. Ranked battles. People who rage quit over things like that tend to be playing not in ranked, but you know. Oh man, we have a lot of the things we want to be doing. We've got turn two Malcolm and turn three Zimone. If we only we had the lands, but uh, blue, I think there's only like 14 sources, so I think we got them all of this. Um, and now we have sort of the opposite problem. We've got green spells, uh, no means by which to cast them. But I don't know that we're likely to get a better five than this. Hit green, we're in decent shape, and we have some protection from early stuff. Uh, so we're going to keep this, and maybe and we just dump the Terrace under. Well, that's not the worst draw of all time. At least it's something to do on their turn if they do not play like Jace or something here. We can spell pierce it, and maybe they'll rage quit like our earlier opponent. 
Uh, Dreams of Steel and Oil. Artifact or Creature card. Um, I, th I think we're actually going to play Fairy Mastermind because I don't really want it chosen here. It is pretty awful to have our opponent know we have Spell Pierce, I'm not gonna lie. That's fine with me, it leaves me the same number of options, really. If they had something they wanted to play that Spell Pierce protects from, at least they can't play it this turn. Okay. Uh, we bash. Went with Affliction. Um, so we can just protect that dude. But I'm a little bit inclined not to use Exile. I don't want him to be Exiled, actually, but... We just let it be exiled. We can play a Gixian Puppeteer. But if if they just deal with the Gixian Puppeteer, we're so screwed. So I'm kind of inclined to spell pierce it. And... Nah. If we just remove Gixian Puppeteer. It will be annoying here. Hindsight, I'm kind of wishing I did Spell Pierce it. Because we, we don't have Spell Pierce up now. We can get nothing back off of our Puppeteer if it dies. And if they exile it... Oh, okay. They're, they're letting us untap. That's kind of cool. Um, and we can actually Spell Pierce a Wandering Emperor. Which isn't the worst. Voidrend can't be countered regardless. Man, I wish there was some way to put something in our yard. Oh well. Here we go. Suspicious Stowaway. Feeling like not very good magic card right now. I don't know what our opponent's doing, but it seems better than what we're doing. Especially with, like, cut down Spell Pierce in hand. If this dude survives, I guess it can allow us to draw a discard off the cut down that we probably don't want. Oh, uh, I mean, we don't have enough. <laughs> Should we draw another cut down? <laughs> and now we can't spell Pierce uh, Wandering Emperor, which is what we're gonna get. Yeah, we're gonna get Wandering Emperor. Ugh, okay. I think we're gonna cut down our own seafaring werewolf. Um, just because I want, I want something in my yard. Yep. Storm gain of life. I feel like we've almost already died here. Another Glissa is almost as bad as another cutdown. We don't have another cutdown. Like even a land, even a blue land would be fine. Like I would run out this freaking less restless beef bastion egg. Uh wander an emperor in no time. Now we have something to cut down. Wait till their turn when they try to put something on it, but uh, we're not going to. I'm just going to do it right now. <laughs> okay, the third is the Sun Slayer. Uh, the Hand of Fortune is not with us so far in this game. If they cast, like, yeah, Memory Deluge is exactly the card I was thinking. Um, we're gonna hold on to the spell pierce. Hopefully, we'll get to a point where we can spell pierce the seven, the flashback version of memory. It would need nine to get around that. We're so far behind here against obviously a controlling deck, um, and our late game value proposition is not the best. Like, 
Soren, the Mirthless, pretty tough. Violence is necessary. Now, I, now I almost wish I had. Well, I do wish I had that uh, cut down back because we'd be able to punch it in response here. Life link just makes this real tough. I don't even know what I want to see at the top of my deck. If it wasn't Zamona Dina, I'm inclined to resign. Seed. But. We'll see. Syncopate. Really good here. They just have so much mana and not. Probably give this another turn or two. Just even knowing they have syncopate. Okay. Um, well, a thing that doesn't deal with syncopate, so, so we would be allowing them to memory deluge. Uh, but we have the tiniest chance of, of pushing through damage on Wandering Emperor or Soren. So we're going to try it. If they remove Restless Reef, we will concede. Seen enough. Good game. Get crumped. We're now four and three. <clears throat> and that'll do it. I, I may bring this deck back to Jank Bruce for another another session, maybe with an edit or two. But take a glance before we wrap up. Um, so one thing, it's, we didn't talk about it in the deck tech when I probably should have, but like 11 green source is probably not good enough. Uh, I think it's likely that I should cut one of, if not both of, the basics. I like at least having a basic for getting um, Guild of Ruined, which has happened to me a handful of times in, in decks where I don't play a basic, <laughs> and it's frustrating. Uh, so that would give us a 12th green source. I think 18 black sources is maybe a little excessive. Um, we only have seven cards that require a green source, but not having it um, is frustrating. So I think we could go to 12 pretty easily. Um, yeah. Add a Land of War Waste or uh, Restless Cottage, or well, even actually just like a Dream Root Cascade or Yav Maya Coast better. I think it's rare that we would want the um, blue-green Restless Land. Just costs quite a bit. Um, isn't likely to be relevant to our deck. So I think I'd rather have something that more likely comes into play untapped. So that would be a cut to consider. I didn't think Spell Pierce was bad. It got us a Rage Quit for sure. Um, Still, just just have questions about suspicious stowaway. Aether Channeler overperformed, but I'd like to see a larger sample size before deciding whether it belongs longer term. Rona, I thought was better than I anticipated. Um, all of the two drops were reasonable. There were there were some circumstances where we kept drawing Malcolm's, um, but I was probably all right with that. And really, continuing to draw Galissa Sun Slayers is also fine with me, generally speaking, unless we don't have that green source. So that's the one cut and change that I would make at this stage is to just get another green source. The end. Thanks for watching Jank Brutes. Peace out.